between Ben and I and Hans. Um, well, you know, I think that it, it is best art reflects life, and so clearly me. But if we're just dealing, you know, with the with the art side of it, obviously our characters, you know, you're meeting them in a, you know, my character still me. in a very capable position to be undoubtedly. Again, me. me. I mean, we can put it to the we test right now. We can put it to the test right now. It depends on what kind of, you know, if it's collegiate wrestling, if it's if it's jujitsu, straight up, you know, matter. soccer boxing or locker room boxing or you know, something like that. Then. No, I think you're right. I think if it was if it remained on its feet, I think Garrett would be pretty pretty tough. But uh, if, you know, if it goes to the ground, he's in serious trouble. Uh, it, it was great. It was just, you know, five weeks prior to this kind of, uh, the film sort of, when it was going, it just kind of, it was going. And and had five weeks to sort of start training and, and you know, assume kind of the MMA fighting training, a little jujitsu with Charlie. And, you know, I wasn't in that shape uh, five weeks prior, so, you know, it was a benefit. If I would have had a, a girlfriend at that time, she would have really uh, been thankful. Yes, that the big part of the movie was about like the transition between being this elite, um, you know, world-class professional warrior soldier, and then shifting gears and all of a sudden trying to sell real estate in Florida, and uh, how you know skill sets are very different, and what these guys have learned for many decades now is you know possibly obviated, and um, you know there's something kind of tragic to that. Um, there's also something heroic in the way that you know, those challenges are further overcome by these guys who have already overcome so much. But uh, that, that's one of the aspects that made the characters more human and more interesting to play. Right, on set. Um, special forces are very, like the people that we worked with anyway, um, were extremely uh, uh, gracious, generous, humble, kind, confident, chill, peaceful um, people. You know, didn't seem to feel the need to like act cool or act tough or impress anybody. You know, they just were very comfortable with themselves. You know, one of the, um, we have I a really- great mud work. <clears throat> <laughs> amazing mud it's acting. Famous for it. <laughs> um, we, yeah, we had an amazing uh, stunt coordinator called uh, Guy Norris, who likes to do everything, uh, not only with the actors as much as possible, but to do everything practically. There'd been a trend in Hollywood uh, in, this, in the era of special effects to outsource all of that to the effect-making uh, wizards. And there's now been this uh, movement sort of back to traditional style of filmmaking where you don't just solve every problem with the special effects money hose and so guy who um, you know rose to uh, prominence most recently in um, as, as the stunt coordinator of um, the last Mad Max movie and you saw that sort of grand operatic spectacle of stunt making all of that stuff was practical so we sort of knew coming into this that he was going to try to get us to do as much of it as possible and I think we all sort of psyched ourselves up for the challenge so and you know honestly you know they they you know even though it's us doing it you still have a, a whole network of stunt guys that have ran the scenario 20 times and looked at all of the potential problems to you know so by the time we show up and do it you know everything's been ironed out and it usually works pretty yeah pretty efficiently and pretty easily and safely.